Hi, everybody. Question for you. I have this piece of code. It just takes two pointers to some sort of int range. Call accumulate with zero. I will compile it with GCC, Clang, even MSVC, O0, so no optimizations. And if I benchmark this with a reasonable data set, I will see that it will run around 1.4 times slower in C++ 20 mode compared to 17. Why? Yes, I am. But why is there a discrepancy between 17 and 20? Anybody? No? Okay. So, in 20, this is, this is from libc++. This is how accumulated looks in uh, libc++. And you can see between lines 8 and 12, there is this nice preprocessor condition that checks whether the standard library version is above 17. And if it is, it will move in it um, in the assignment so that if you're using some sort of type which benefits from move semantics into the accumulate algorithm call, then you will avoid copying it over and over again. Now, this is actually the reason why we see the performance degradations in O0, and it turns out that move on an integer can actually slow down your runtime performance if you're not using optimizations. Now, you might be thinking, why is a call to suit move adding runtime overhead? What's, what's the point? Isn't it just a cast? And you are right, semantically speaking, because that is just a cast. But to the compiler, it is just another function call. You know, move is just a regular template function. It is in line, it's const expert, it's no except, but it doesn't matter. If you have all optimizations disabled, then it will likely not be in line, and you will get some, you know, performance overhead because of the function call. And it doesn't happen in O0. Okay, this issue, if you want to call it that, applies to a lot of functions in the standard library. Things that conceptually are just, you know, very thin wrappers around a cast or a basic operation, but they end up using a function call and provide, providing overhead in debug builds. You can think of move, forward, stuff like as const, as underlying, but if you think about it, even things like the vector iterator classes, those are usually implemented as an extra class, not as a pointer for strong type depth reasons and to make it a little bit more debuggable. Unique pointer dereference operator and so on. All of these things are very small functions that, technically speaking, they should never appear even in your debug stack. They are there just as simple wrappers. Now, somebody already mentioned it. You are debugging, you are, uh, sorry, benchmarking debug code. Why are you doing that? Well, it turns out that in some fields, debug performance is extremely important. For example, in game development, if you have to debug an issue in your game and you have to do that with a build which is not optimized so that you can actually step through your code and it turns out that your game is unplayable because it's so slow due to this extra overhead, then it becomes useless. And what this ends up doing is discouraging people from using modern C++. I've seen it multiple times on Twitter, talking to people at conferences, and even doing it myself sometimes, avoiding nice abstractions and things like that because when the code needs to be backed, those things are gonna end up making the debug performance lower and affecting the whole experience. So it turns out that people that are discouraged from doing this end up writing more C-like code with more manual kind of like arithmetic on pointers and stuff like that, which will likely have more bugs, which needs more debugging. So it's a bit of a, you know, snake biting his tail issue, but they have a reason why they do that. What can we do? So OG doesn't cut it. If you don't know what OG is, it's an option you can pass to most compilers, which will do some basic inlining, and it's meant for debugging and optimizing a bit. But sometimes it still does too much, and it makes it hard to debug your code. For Clang, it is actually the exact same thing as O1. So if you look at the documentation, OG is just an alias for O1. And MSVC doesn't have an equivalent, so people that are working in game dev, which mostly work on Windows, will not have this option. Some people resort to macros. This looks terrible, but it's reasonable. You can read this article from Jonathan Muller on, on the link here. Some compilers are taking action. For example, GCC now folds, moves, and forwards in the front end step and completely removes them. They become like magically a cast. And I like this approach. It's a very nice approach. And I'm trying to make this issue more widespread. I have links here for my bug reports to GCC, Clang, and MSVC. So if you're interested in, you know, making your voice be heard and maybe contributing and making this a reality. These are some links. You can find the slides there. And I have five seconds, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vittorio.